Thank you everyone for coming. I see a lot of new faces. Often it's the same people coming to these uh, pollution or environmental climate change uh, talks. So which is good because a lot of it is old stuff because not much has happened uh, in Pakistan regarding air pollution in the last uh, 20 years since the first report started coming about it in the 1990s. Here behind me, you see um, our blue planet. And it is breathtaking. But I hope none of you are taking deep breaths without wearing one of these, because our blue planet actually looks a little bit different. Pollution isn't just a problem in Pakistan, or India, or Beijing, or Bangkok. It starts all the way across northern Africa, goes through the Middle East. And then we have this another belt uh, south of the Hindu Kush, the Karakarums and the Himalayas. So from Kabul to Dhaka, we have similar levels of air pollution. But uh, the last years, we've just been uh, ignorant about this issue. So we don't know that it's even a problem to begin with. It's not that last year the pollution was better or worse than this year or 10 years ago. It's always been this bad. We simply have not known about it. So. Um, Aisha Raja was actually one of the first people who hosted an air quality monitor here in Lahore in 2016. So um, thanks to ordinary people like us who said, let's do something, let's find out about air pollution. We have some data. And I'm going to show you a little bit of it in the next slide. So you know, ignorance is bliss. In much of the world, um, this is a picture kind of of this region. So you see Pakistan over here, and you see um, India and China and the Middle East, and you see all these numbers. Those are there because there are monitors over there. And we know that uh, it is very polluted. Pakistan is one of the only nations where we don't have uh, reference standard monitoring done by the government. Um, these numbers that you see for Karachi and Lahore are because of the monitors that we've set up. So in fact, um, the one that Aisha set up is over here. The one that I set up is over there. Now we have uh, around two dozen more monitors. But we need a lot more. When we talk about air pollution, we talk about a lot of uh, different things. We talk about uh, carbon dioxide, which is less of a pollutant, and it's more of a climate change issue, which uh, uh, contributes towards global warming. But um, there are other things which are also climate change issues, which also uh, significantly contribute to global warming. Those are called short-lived climate modifiers, because they dissipate much faster instead of stay staying for centuries. Some stay for weeks, some stay for months, some stay for years. And, those are things like nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide. Um, the very elevated levels of those are what's exacerbating your asthma and allergies in these months and also helping increase uh, hospital admission rates, giving great business to hospitals and doctors now. But that's not all what's uh, in the atmosphere. Because when we're burning stuff uh, in the cars we drive, uh, in the uh, power sources that we have, so coal power plants, also furnace oil power plants, Lots of beautiful red bricks all around Lahore, fired in brick kilns. They all use uh, very poor quality combustion sources, and which give you like trace metals. So you have potassium, calcium, magnesium, zinc, iron, magnesium, carbon. This is all is what you're breathing in. And these are the pollutants that you're primarily interested in because you know carbon dioxide doesn't harm you until it reaches very elevated levels, which can never happen outdoors. Indoors, yes, you close all the rooms and like with all these people, you start feeling drowsy after like a couple of hours, it's not gonna kill you. But it is these things in the air, which is what we're worried about. These elements are uh, very, 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 very small. So how small are they? It's smaller in size than a bacteria and virus. It's smaller in size than a red blood cell. So it's not just a, a respiratory health issue, a pulmonary issue, it's also cardiovascular issue, it causes cancer various ailments, and that's uh, why we need to know what's out in the air. How safe is a safe number? Well, uh, for a good air day, um, like there are the different ways of measuring it because you measure the number directly and I can tell you, okay, there's so many particulate matter uh, concentration per cubic meter of air in, in micrograms, or I can tell you how much um, nitrogen dioxide is, all these other things. But because it becomes confusing, there's an index, which is called the air quality index. It, uh, there are different standards. Most of them started from the US standards because they started their pollution uh, much earlier in the 1970s with the Clean Air Act. Um, so it goes from zero to 500. Um, below 50 is good air quality, right? So 
and the index means it's comprising of all of these different things uh, and you know makes up a number. But in a way, it's kind of a line that goes like this. So below 50 is good, below 100 is moderate. Anything above 100 starts becoming un unhealthy, with above 300 becoming hazardous to human health. The numbers are less important than what they mean. So like you will see in the red uh, from January to roughly June, you have um, unhealthy air quality. Um, th this particular time when we measured, we had moderate air quality in the summer months. And then starting October, we go towards very unhealthy, hazardous uh, air quality for uh, much of the rest of the year. So people might think it's only a winter issue. And you know, like you think, how long is the winter in Lahore? It lasts a month. But um, the winter, when it comes to the fifth season of smog and air pollution, lasts a good six months. That's about half the year. That I mean, actually, even more than that, that you're living in unhealthy air quality. What does that do to you? Uh, well, briefly, five years lost in life expectancy as per latest studies done a few years ago. Uh, the new studies, which are not out yet, but are expected to come out, will show you that's much worse than this. So, because air pollution is a new issue, there's a lot of research being done on this. So, five year loss in life expectancy in uh, all over Punjab, doesn't matter if you're in South or Muntan, Islamabad. 2.1 years. So th this was a, a thing put together by the University of Chicago um, la earlier this year. These, these are where we have monitors. We do in Gujranwala, it's hazardous. In Faisalabad, it's hazardous. In Bhavanpur, it's very unhealthy. Peshawar, Rawalpindi, Islamabad. Karachi is at the bottom of the list because uh, I'm from Karachi and we have a sea breeze, so it just blows away all the pollution. There's a uh, misconception where people think Karachi is a bigger industrial city, so there will be more pollution. Uh, you know, we're all generating pollution everywhere, but Lahore has uh, faces what's called a meteorological misfortune, where the pollution cannot escape in the winter months. So everything that's coming out from the tailpipes of your cars, from the diesel generators you're using, and the public transportation, the industry, is uh, coming into the atmosphere and instead of being able to escape, it stays trapped. So the concentrations build up to these very dangerous levels. Like, um, you, you kind of see the numbers here, right? So Karachi, the best city, okay, we're talking about um, uh, one, one, this is December last year, so was unhealthy uh, at 141. This summer, um, it was forecast for Bangkok that the air pollution will be uh, around 160. They shut down schools for the whole week because of 160. In Lahore, I don't think it ever gets to 160. It's like 200, 250. Here we are, so we're seeing here from the summer months where it's better and going towards the winter months. So from June to December, every year it roughly looks the same. It varies a lot up and down. It's going um, down here, the blue line, is the World Health Organization safe limit. Um, the green line is Pakistan's uh, national environment place standards, which are provincial, and that's showing their safe limits. We don't meet those standards, uh, more or less ever. So these are the number of good air days that you see in Lahore. Zero good air days meeting international standards. How many standard uh, days are you meeting Pakistani standards? Anyone hazard a guess? The number? Three. Three? Three days. Three days. Three days. Three days. So, okay. Um, pa uh, on the next slide, so you will see moderate, which is by the US standards. What's called moderate means it's good by Pakistani standards. Just 20 days in a year meet Pakistan's own national environment quality standards. Um, yet, the government is so far turning a pretty blind eye to it by saying that, you know, we're doing all these things. We're showing you for, for Lahore, these were the 20 days. Um, this is unhealthy for sensitive growth, 64 days. Rest of the days, unhealthy, very unhealthy, hazardous. So the last uh, week or 10 days, I think mostly we've been living in hazardous air quality. Th this chart here is showing, like, uh, the government's data, so this is for uh, Lahore from the Punjab government. Uh, what I was showing you earlier before focused mostly on one type of pollutant. So nitrogen oxide, for example. 
safe limit is 40, which is the, the national standard, which are already higher than they should be. Here's the value in Lahore, 52, which is what's causing your asthma and other issues. What you should take away from this is that air quality in Pakistan exceeds safe limits in all our cities. I mean, except maybe if you go to um, Chitral or Skardu, or there, where there's no uh, human activity as such. 135,000 people die every year directly because of ambient air pollution, that is outdoor air pollution. We're not talking about the poor communities uh, who are cooking indoors or open fire. That number is a similar number. Um, how many people died from the war on terror in Pakistan? Any numbers? Because the two numbers are actually similar. 70 I think it, it was uh, uh, since 2011 till now, it was about 120,000 people have died in these 16, 17 years put together. So that's all the, uh, the killings at the army public school and our people dying in Afghanistan and Kashmir. So all of the terrorism put together is 120,000 people in those many years. This is one year. More people die every year because of air pollution in Pakistan than anything else. A life expectancy, we talked about a uh, reduction of five years in Punjab. And there's a huge economic impact. Uh, where 5% of GDP is economic impact of the reduction in life and uh, the health effects that are related with it. There are solutions. We will talk about the solutions more in the discussion. But very roughly, I would say, um, these are the areas we have to address. So for example, transportation, it's not just one thing. It's not just about having public transport. It's about having clean fuel, which we don't have. Pakistan uses worse uh, diesel and petrol than you will find in African nations. Uh, we have the poorest fuel possible. It's unimaginable. I mean, I think if we clean up the fuel, which is the easiest and cheapest thing to do, overnight you will have a significant change in air pollution. Um, and then, of course, things like public transportation are using, uh, instead of using trucks to transport cargo, use trains. Um, industrial emissions, we don't have an EPD who's active. Um, we need to start putting checks on industrial emissions also. Uh, you, you know, much of the world's done it, so there are ways to do it. Agriculture, similar, like the overuse of fertilizer is a big thing. So uh, pol pollution is not just a winter issue when you can see it, it's a whole year. Uh, in fact, more crop burning happens in the summer harvest than it does now. It just doesn't build up, so that's why you don't um, see it that, that much. Urban waste is a huge issue because those are fires happening in your communities. Um, I don't know if, if many of you have been to the farmhouse around Bedia. We have a monitor there, and that consistently shows to be one of the worst polluted areas because there's a lot more small fires happening in that area. So. You will see like 250 in this part of Lahore, but you will see 500 in Bedia, which you would imagine you're going to the countryside, it's nice and clean, uh, but because it's fairly urbanized still over there. And all of this needs to be supported by monitoring, which we are lacking, because without data, without knowledge, without like knowing the basics, because if I change, a, if the government creates a policy and says, okay, we clean up the fuel, but if we have no way to measure the impact of it, then, you know, maybe it might as well not have happened. So um, to end with, smog is a public health emergency. 